Okay, then, gents, let's focus now on who struggled a little bit in the opening weekend of the campaign. Mm. Who do we expect a little bit more from? Focusing on clubs and players who are a bit off the pace. And, Nick, there's only one place to start here, really. Manchester United, Eric Ten Hag. Worst possible start for the Dutchman in charge at United. Lost against Brighton. Didn't just lose. They totally dominated throughout the 90 minutes. They looked a bit scared, quite shaky. What did you see from Manchester United? And... We were all expecting a bit better than this, but maybe are we being a bit too harsh on Ten Hag because that squad is pretty much the same group of players who really struggled last season. So is it more the recruitment side of things that United need to kick on with? Otherwise, it's going to be the status quo, right? It's going to be the same season again that they had last season. This is going to sound cynical. I legitimately thought when I saw the lineup, this guy is going to sacrifice a game in order to show his bosses what he needs. I really thought that. And it was nothing against Fred or McTominay, who I think could be with someone else alongside them, a good piece. But they did not get their forwards the ball. Ronaldo, by the way, has to go. Has to go. 12 touches in the second half. Even if he was barely interested, he should have gotten more than 12 touches. And four of those touches came on one really nice run to feed Marcus Rashford. Um, if I'm United fans, I'm not as worried as I as, as I'm not as worried as usual, <laughs> which is saying something <laughs> about how far they've fallen. Because I think on another day, Marcus Rashford scores. I think on another day, Bruno Fernandez puts them up one nothing inside of 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, he just did, he just did not get over the ball. He knocked it over the bar. Um, so I don't think it was as bad. And I think we all agree Brighton's a halfway decent team for where Manchester United is now. But I think that's Eric Ten Hag's way of telling the board, you don't get me a center midfielder mm -hmm. and you want me to play this guy as my captain. I know, Joe, this is touchy subject was whenever I bring up Maguire, it's it, and you're viewing him as what you've seen with England, which is much better. But he was not good. Delo was not good. And he was good during the preseason. Shaw was OK. And Martinez was okay, but could have given away a penalty. That's four guys that were a problem all at the same position. Yeah, I think you talked there about, you know, McTominay and Fred. It was so clear that they need a creator. They need a playmaker, a deep line playmaker who can... That, that's the hub of all of what Ten Hag is trying to do, essentially, to keep the ball, to advance it, to move what up the pitch as a unit. They don't have that player. And then seeing them linked with Rabio now from Juventus, who really has struggled there yeah. and a lot of question marks. It's, you know, it doesn't look like they're going to get Frankie De Jong because of the Barcelona situation, the finances, there's, there's chaos there. And they've chased him all summer long. And it just seems the same issues time and time again for United. And not to go too much into it, though, Marco Anatovic is another player that's been linked to Manchester United. What are they doing, Joe? I have no idea because it's, Ronaldo coming in, it's Cavani, it's Agallo. They're just panic buying a veteran forward who can maybe plug a gap. And this was meant to be a different Man United. They're meant to have a different recruitment policy, a manager that promoted youth. And it's just the same mistakes playing out. And I think that's why Man United's fans are so frustrated. Andy, jump in here before I keep going on another 15-minute monologue on Manchester United. Yeah, I, I like the idea that, that Ten Hag, you know, used that game as, as a way to make a point to the owners. I I, I tend to think it's more uh, a factor of, I think he just realized how much work is ahead of him at Manchester United. Maybe that game served as a pretty good example. I think the last couple of weeks since Ronaldo has started kicking up a fuss, wanting to leave, and realizing just how much power he has not just within the dressing room, but I think within the club as well, right. because of the name and the commercial appeal and value he has. So, because let's be honest, that's why he's not been, uh, that's why Manchester United are not making every effort to move him on right now. That's why their kind of public stance is, well, we don't want to let him leave. We want to have him here. Right. That is the reason. It's not because of what he brought on the field on, on Saturday. Uh, obviously, I, 12 touches in the game. Uh, it's, you know, He's not the player that they needed a, a year ago. He's not the player that they need now. Uh, it, it's There's a lot of players that I think they need to be targeting in the transfer market that they've not. They have continued to just sign players that were available and have the biggest name and profile possible. And, and the squad looks like that. It looks like a collection of a lot of players who, in the right situations, I think could be a good squad player, could be a good regular starter for a pretty good Premier League side. But when we're talking about Manchester United, you know, that's not the quality that they need. And I think it's time we just maybe, 
I've, tr- I've been trying, I've been beating around the bush of saying this. I think we just realized that this is just who Manchester United is now because they're going to change managers every year, every year and a half, probably a new identity, a new philosophy, a new direction. And it's going to be a lot of money spent by each manager and then a lot of money wasted when the new one comes in and has to move players on and bring his own in. You know, you look at those two, two teams on Saturday and the quality of Brighton and the way that they played and attacked and moved the ball. It looked a lot like Arsenal uh, on this weekend. Four years under Graham Potter, it took to achieve that. At Brighton, it can be done if you give the manager time and you have everybody working on the same page. Exactly. And you look back to the Sir Alex Ferguson glory days, you know, he nearly got fired right at the very start of that. And it, was, it wasn't it was all plain sailing at the start. And it, it, you mentioned it there, Andy. It was great, that point you made about it, it's, maybe this is what Manchester United are now. And when you saw Eric Ten Hag walk out of the dugout at the start and applauding the fans, I was like, I just feel like I've seen this so often. Mm-hmm. With Mourinho, <laughs> Louis Van Gaal, Solskjaer, Ralph Rangnick. It's, there's so many names coming in and out, so many different philosophies and styles of management. And it's just uh, David Moyes. It, it's just a mess. It, oh. it's, it's so weird to say this, right, Nick? But it's this is the reality of the situation. I don't think anyone at Manchester United, either the fans, people behind the scenes at the club, want to accept the reality that they aren't anywhere near the team and the sort of club that they were and yes they're famous yes they're one of the biggest teams in the world but that doesn't guarantee success go ahead there's still a click issue i'll be real quick with this there's still that click issue and that goes back to the ronaldo thing um i think that you know he mentioned Varane getting back to full fitness um he mentioned some things like that but there are pieces there that are clearly better and there are also weird fit pieces bruno fernandez is a weird fit that Bruno Fernandez is the reason you need a Frankie de Jong because you need to give Fernandez some freedom to be creative, but you've also got Jadon Sancho. Who's a fantastic winger. I loved him. I loved him the other day, but if Ronaldo's your center forward and Fernandez is your center mid, that is a gigantic hole. If you want to play a system, it's a huge hole. And so they need to tick off some big pieces and, one of them might be the captain of the club, who I think is a good player um, who needs to get his confidence back at club level. And right now, Martinez is a shiny new toy. Varane is a world-class center back. Where does that leave Harry Maguire? It's a little worrying. Yeah, it is worrying that they haven't figured these things out as we're in That's the part of the season, right? And he's had a lot of time over the preseason to figure that out. Um, talk about a team who looked a bit sluggish and a bit off it. I don't know if we should be worried about them, but... I was at Craven Cottage to see Liverpool draw two all at Fulham. Jurgen Klopp in the press conference afterwards sat just across the table from me. It's a very tight little press conference room, which he commented <laughs> on. Um, he was asked how frustrated he was. And he said, what, out of 10? 12 out of 10. He said, I was very frustrated. Yeah. And he said that performance was a defeat. The result wasn't a defeat, but the mm-hmm. performance was. And he hated the intensity, lack of it, the lack of hunger, it seemed, in his team from the very start and Fulham were a bit unlucky, hit the post, had some other chances. Liverpool had big chances too, but this was the most un-Liverpool performance I've seen under Jurgen Klopp in a long, long time. Because usually they bring the intensity. It's a tough game. Maybe the quality is not right quite there and they'll draw a game, lose the odd game. But this was a really weird performance from Liverpool. And I just was wondering, is there something maybe a hangover from last season, just losing out in the Premier League title, just losing out on the Champions League in the final. Is there, was a bigger refresh needed than just Darwin Nunez coming in? Andy, I don't know what you thought about that performance, but just maybe a few alarm bells ringing, but they're still going to be really good and they're still going to be title contenders. I want to just make that very clear for everyone. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Do you think maybe we put a little too much stock in the Community Shield uh, a a week ago because we were talking about City and Holland and Liverpool looks so good and and the intensity is there to start the season. Then the season actually starts. And yeah, you're right. The intensity just wasn't there. It did look like they... I don't know. It's it's crazy to think that that Liverpool could be shell shocked against Fulham, but that's the way that they looked for periods uh, of that game. And and like you say, Joe, it probably should have been more than two for Fulham. They probably should have had a third and maybe even a fourth. I think this is something that will probably correct itself out, and I think will be a very very good early season uh, example for 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 Klopp to say, look, we know where we've been the last couple of seasons. We know what we did last season. We know what we almost did 
last season and how close we came, but we have to go through the entire process again. I think that's something that we forget is when a team gets to the final game, they get to the Super Bowl, they get to the Champions League final, you think, okay, well, they'll be back again next year because they've got the right players and they're at a pretty good age and the squad is not going to get too old too quickly. But you have to go through the entire season again, and you have to do every little detail of every single day, every single game. And then maybe it's just a little bit of a mentality issue for them uh, to start the season, because obviously the quality is there. The fitness is there. Uh, we've just seen them not too recently um, at, at their very, very best down the stretch last season. So I'm not going to worry yet about Liverpool because they drew Fulham 2-2 away. I'm going to choose to maybe, I don't know, give a little bit of credit to Fulham. They played pretty well, and, and they seem to have at least an idea and a plan and an identity, which is different from the last time they were in the Premier League, for sure. Yeah, I liked it. I was very impressed with Fulham. Uh, the atmosphere was great. I think the fans were surprised as well by how good some of the new signings there did. Pereira, midfield, Polina was mopping up everything, so... Yeah, maybe we're a bit low on expectations for Fulham. It'll still be a long season, but definitely a very confident start, which uh, captain and USMNT legend Tim Ream uh, said as well. They're very happy with that performance. Talk about teams you wouldn't be happy with the performance in opening weekend, Nick. Southampton heavily beaten at Tottenham. Aston Villa just not turning up, basically, and losing to Bournemouth. Everton, familiar problems there, especially going forward without Calvert-Lewin injured and, and losing Richarlison over the summer. I mean, are you concerned about those teams anybody else that stood out to you that would be a bit worried about this season well two of those teams i was already concerned about uh saints i think are going to have to they've got young players that they have to get used to a system so i wasn't worried about that especially with them playing tottenham everton to me you guys know how I, uh, you guys know how i feel about frank lampard um it's going to be all about who they recruit and who they bring in they need people there. They need difference makers. If, if Adrisa Ganagwe is going to come back, if mm -hmm. uh, some of the other names are going to be like, so Villa is the one I'm, I'm really kind of nervous about just because Gerard is, is he's messing with the sauce and this might be a good thing. It might be a bad <laughs> thing. He's taken the captaincy away of Tyrone Mings. He's taken him out of the lineup because basically he didn't like the way he reacted, even though Mings publicly came out and said he got it and he understood it and why John McGinn was going to be the guy. Um, Steven Gerard's doing big boy things. And that may work. It may make Villa an absolute force. But the one thing I worry about is if they don't succeed, you look back at the last 15 games of last year or 13 games, whatever it was, where they only won twice. And you wonder, has this guy gotten a little a little ahead of himself? Yeah, and yeah, it, that, Villa. Yeah, there, there's similar, I think, parallels between what's happening at United with Ten Hag versus Ronaldo and Gerard versus Mings, although one of them was... I guess, self-created by Gerard, and the other was imposed upon Eric Ten Hag. And so you could say, well, who's really at, at fault here? There was a bit of the, and sorry, Joe, but there was a bit of the Southampton heads dropped after the first goal went in two minutes in for Bournemouth and Villa heads were just the intensity that's always there. Like that is, that is the, uh, the most recognizable characteristic of Gerard's team since he's been at Villa, and it just was not there on Saturday. And so I will probably chalk it up to that and say I think they'll be much better out next time out and on the whole of the season. But it was a, it was a shocking performance, and given everything combined in totality with what's going on behind the scenes, it, yeah, I maybe do worry about. I think I predicted them eighth or ninth this season. That might have been a little high. Well. We'll wait and see, right? A few more weeks until we go back on some of our amazing preseason predictions because, you know, let's see how it all pans out between now and the end of transfer window in particular. But head over to Pro Soccer Talk and NBCSports.com. They'll give you previews, how to watch information, analysis and recaps on all of the Premier League action this weekend, uh, this season, sorry, and from this weekend. So uh, we'll, keep, we'll be very busy uh, between now and May. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. For even more Premier League content from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you over there.